Over the weekend, what got my attention was some comments from President Biden talking about regime change in Russia. I mean, he wasn't talking about some banana republic in Latin America. He was talking about Russia. That really got my attention. So I want to ask a professional uh, all about this. Dr. Ariel Cohen, senior fellow of the Atlantic Council Eurasia Center. Get this, Matt. Speaks English. Okay, I'm with him there. Hebrew, interesting. Russian and Ukrainian. He is the person to talk about this stuff. Uh, Dr. Cohen, thanks so much for joining us here. What did you make of President Biden's, I guess, kind of off script remark over the I weekend don't about buy that it was off script? It was too well delivered, and it, it was sounded too, good to me. It sounded scripted. It did. What do, what do you make of that, uh, Ariel? Well, I I hope it was uh, off script uh, because you do not have the president of the United States talking about regime change in a major nuclear power that the main idea behind this war is that the West somehow is trying uh, to destroy Russia, dismember Russia, get Putin out of office, etc. This was a gaffe, and uh, this is not the first time Joe Biden does this. Uh, as you saw, the uh, White House tried to walk it back. If the president decided, and I know for a fact, that there were no discussion and decision uh, to go for regime change in any kind of systemic way. We actually, we did not go for regime change during the Cold War. The policy was containment and then pushback under Reagan. Uh, we did not talk about it. The regime change as it happened was the handiwork of the Russian people uh, themselves. And this should be uh, our policy now. If you have Russians, who understand the disastrous policy that President Putin pursued in Ukraine, that understand the exorbitant co costs uh, that it will cost Russia and the Russian people, they should do it possibly with our tacit support and uh, with our um, uh, using our media and talking to the Russian people uh, right. above and beyond the heads of uh, the leadership. Uh, Dr. Cohen, you know, it, it, what shocks me about this whole thing in Ukraine is how badly President Putin, you know, kind of went about this, how he misjudged everything, it seems like. Are you surprised? Absolutely. Are you surprised? Yes, I, yes, I am, because I was in and out of Russia uh, meeting with analysts and politicians and retired military, uh, speaking at events there before COVID. And this thing about a big war, as they called it, uh, I picked up, this was scheduled for 2020, that's why I was writing and publishing saying that it's coming. Uh, I was uh, among those who predicted the war. What I didn't predict is the fierce, amazing resistance of the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian military, and also how poorly, abysmally, uh, the Russian military is performing in Ukraine. Look. Um, Ukraine is resisting now for a month to an operation that the Russians plan that will last three days. They had their uh, parade uniforms uh, for uh, a parade in Kiev after three days. Uh, they, they're talking about, you know, liberating the brotherly Slavic Christian Orthodox folk in Ukraine. And to do that, they're now bringing Hezbollah from Lebanon. Uh, Syrian mercenaries and the Chechen Islamists from Chechnya. Uh, so it's, they're bringing Muslims to kill Russian Orthodox Christian right. or Christian Orthodox uh, people who speak a language similar to Russian. Hey, you don't have so, to tell us. Uh, I, I, this is a bad thing. Clearly, I, I don't think um, I don't think many are in disagreement with President Biden when he calls Putin a butcher. The question is, why would you want? to leave a butcher in power. And I guess partially it's just about a diplomatic language that your everyday American doesn't speak because we, what I hear you saying is we are pushing for regime change, but we want it to be indirect. So what we do is we uh, uh, put these massive sanctions on Russia, which Putin clearly doesn't 
doesn't feel at his what palatial palace on the Black Sea, right? Um, but the everyday Russian feels them. And in fact, more importantly, the oligarchs surrounding him feel them. And what we're hoping is you get a, a kind of Julius Caesar moment where they decide to dethrone him. Um, is, that, uh, is that the case? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes and no. Putin feels it because Russia uh, will uh, suffer. I mean, the economic sanctions uh, impact just uh, beginning uh, today. From all the polling data that I saw, and it's, it's very unreliable. You really need to drill down who is polling and, and you know, what, who are they working for. But basically, six, I would say 60% of the Russians are supporting um, this uh, bloody war right. and uh, Russia already lost probably as many people in one month as they lost in nine mm. years in Afghanistan when the Soviet Union right. collapsed. Now, uh, Putin will feel it yep. uh, because he looks at the balance All right, sheet. Dr. Karman, we're going to check out the leave it there because of time. We're going to get you back soon to get the latest on Ukraine and Russia. Dr. Errol Cohen, Atlanta Council, Eurasia Center. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to get more content like this.